the disappearance of Susie Lamplew is something that I've seen a lot of different true crime documentary series covered, usually for one episode and it's you know 45 minutes or an hour and they always kind of have the same approach but I was still quite keen to watch the Susie Lamplew mystery. Uh, it's a sky crime show, I watch it on Now TV. I did kind of think how much can this really tell me that others have never really told me but actually it went into a really great amount of detail. I will say the first kind of three or four minutes I thought this is this is going to be awful because it's it started with like clips of vloggers and podcasters discussing this case and I thought please please don't let this be another one where vloggers are giving their not professional opinion about this. Thankfully it wasn't. They just did that for like a minute. And then we had a voiceover of an actress speaking Susie Lamplew's words, telling her own story. These are not words that were her own words. These are not extracts from a diary. This is just a scripted voiceover and that's always so uncomfortable and I often feel quite disrespectful as well because the documentary itself is giving Susie a voice. You don't need a, a voiceover to do that. But that didn't actually appear that often, so I was kind of pleased with that. And the rest of the documentary, once we get over that, is actually really, really good. There are some things about the case itself that are quite frustrating, but I think everything's very well presented. It is balanced in the sense that it doesn't... I, I quite like the fact that it doesn't necessarily pl paint Lamplu in the best light. Um, there were suggestions that she was having affairs and, you know, she was leaving work in the middle of the day to, as is theorised, run a personal errand, but making it look like she was meeting this Mr Kipper for a business appointment. Doesn't paint her as this angelic being like a lot of documentaries do, and I think that that's absolutely fantastic. The only way where it could have been a little bit more balanced is that it's basically saying that John Canaan did it. And I guess that's because that's where all the evidence points. As far as I know from this documentary and from others that I've seen, there was not really any other main suspect for any length of time. So if you believe that John Canan didn't do it for whatever reason, then this documentary will probably annoy you because it's kind of suggested that he did. There was just never the solid evidence. But was there? I will discuss the river incident um, in a bit, but I'll discuss the actual documentary itself. So, aside from the vloggers and the voiceover, nothing wrong with the actual voiceover actress, but I just think it's really distasteful. It's not something I like. The actual two-parter, you know, it's 45 minutes each, so it's about an hour and a half. Um, it's actually very well edited, very well put together. We get to hear from detectives who were involved in the case at the time. We get to hear from Susie's older brother, who keeps referring to her murder, or suspected murders, somebody who had done Susie. He kept saying, you know, if Canaan had done Susie, or, or Suze as he called her. I thought that was a very um, unusual choice of words when discussing a loved one. I guess maybe he's a bit sensitised to it now because it's been so long, it's not quite as raw, but it kind of made me think that's that's not normal to say that your loved one had been done instead of killed or whatever so that was a bit odd but we get to hear from um as i said the detectives at the case michael somebody whose name i surname i can't remember it'll come back to me i hope um but i loved his perspective i loved that you know he was admitting that certain things hadn't been done by other areas of the met at the time and the forensic psychologist, uh, or forensic criminologist, sorry, who, again, didn't write down her name. I should have done. I apologise for that. But I liked her opinion a lot as well. I thought that input there was really good. It doesn't spend too much time discussing Lamplew's life working for the estate agent, whereas a lot of the other ones I've seen do. You know, I, I did see one documentary that suggested that it was a genuine appointment and that she went into this house and there's a very similar case um, about an estate agent who was showing somebody around and she was, you know, held captive in this house that was up for sale. 
but that's that's not the case here it's not really what anybody believes to be honest and it utilizes quite a lot of footage from the time which is not something i'd seen before i'd seen a lot of reconstructions of what people have theorized had happened there are no reconstructions here thankfully i hate for the most part especially with high profile cases i just cannot abide reconstructions i don't know why i just feel like they're always really never that well acted they never get the best actors for them and the camera angles are always dodgy there's some really weird slow motion and sound effects they're never very good but there's none of that here they do have footage from the time um you know clips from interviews with her family and and things like that which to the best of my memory i'd never seen that done before in an episode that discussed the susie lampu disappearance also i may call her Lampu at several points without knowing it. I, I find it very difficult to say Lampu, Lampu, very hard word to say. So the, I guess the last thing I want to touch upon for this documentary is that it mentioned the whole luggage in the river. And I don't understand quite a lot about this. So the person who believed he walked past Canaan uh, at five o'clock in the morning next to the river Brent is convinced that it was him and reported it to the police because he saw him carrying luggage, heard a splash, turned round and this person who we believe is John Canaan was running away without the luggage. It seems pretty fair to kind of surmise that he had thrown it in the river and, and kind of bombed it away. This was reported three times and the police did nothing and I did read somewhere that the police didn't associate it with the Lamplu case because they didn't feel that there was a strong enough connection between, even though it was only three days after, a strong enough connection between where she frequented and where the, this part of the river was. Which, you know, fair enough. I still think that that's a really ridiculous reason, but if they had a reason, fine. But that is still very suspicious. Canaan was still known for being a criminal. And if somebody said, I've just seen a known criminal dump luggage in a river, that should still have been investigated regardless of whether or not they thought it was Susie Lampu. Because that could have been somebody else if it wasn't. That could have been somebody else who was missing. And I don't know why now they're not looking into it. The, you know, He couldn't have thrown it very far into the river. It would have been quite close to the edge where it's probably relatively shallow and the current's not that strong. Yes, it's been, quick calculation, 30-something years. But I think when this documentary was made, it would have been, I think, 32 years. Yes, it's been a long time. But it's not going to have disappeared. And it will still be there. Maybe not in that exact location. But unless, you know, a riverboat has come through and dragged it far away. But it would have been on the bed. It would have definitely almost certainly would have been on the riverbed so it's unlikely that that would have happened not impossible of course and I get that they have very limited resources the men are completely under resourced and underfunded and understaffed etc but there still is very strong evidence to suggest that something potentially a body was thrown into the river and I guess the only thing now is that perhaps because the individual who reported it at the time has passed away recently and now it's kind of second-hand information, the exact location of where this took place might be harder to pinpoint. And they can't exactly search the entire River Brent. I get that, completely get that. But I think if they did, they might, might have found her, especially if they did it at the time. And I just think it's ridiculous that there's very strong evidence to, su to suggest that this missing person could be right there and they're not doing anything about it and I'm surprised the family didn't really push for that to be revealed um, or to be investigated further I just don't get why they wouldn't do that maybe I mean maybe they are the document documentary didn't suggest that they did it's just very frustrating and Obviously, I hope one day Lamplu is found. A body cannot just completely disappear. Even if you burn a body, you're not going to get rid of everything. Um, but of course, there's no suggestion that that was ever, ever done in this particular case. It is a very good documentary. Uh, I didn't expect it to be this good, particularly with the first kind of five minutes being 
really setting us up for a really appalling documentary. You know, it had suggestions that it was going to be going in this direction and it would have been so bad if it did. But actually it was pretty brilliant, very balanced. As I said, didn't suggest that it was anybody other than Canaan. But again, mainly because there were very few other potential suspects. Didn't paint Susie Lamclou as this golden angel. I think it was very honest about her personality and her characteristics. Definitely worth watching. As I said, I watched it on Now TV. There are some brilliant crime documentaries on there just now. It is part of Sky Crime. I wish I had Sky TV. I have to maybe consider investigating getting that. Definitely give this a watch if you're interested in the case. If you know nothing about the case, fantastic introduction. I learned a few things that other documentary episodes hadn't taught me. Absolutely fantastic way to spend an hour and a half.